Hi. You haven't changed a bit. I'm sorry you have to see me in such a sorry state. Really? Well, that's good. I wouldn't want to affect your image of me. I didn't talk to you on the train because I knew you and I would get to talk alone here. Worth waiting for, don't you think? You seem to have a lot to ask me. Elio said he foresaw three questions, but they would be the same in essence. If I were to hear one of them, I would then tell you the objective of this trip in all its detail. Since you asked one of the three questions, it means everything is going smoothly. Sienjo's Stellaron problem is not directly linked to us. But if you look at it from Elio's perspective, you can't say the Stellaron hunters are completely innocent. We foresaw all this long ago but chose to remain indifferent until the time was right for us to get... Diviner Fu was surprised because she discovered three truths. One, the Stellaron Hunters are not enemies of the Sienjo. You know this now, though you refuse to believe it. Two, someone else brought the Stellaron into the Sienjo and activated it. A result of both internal unrest and external aggression. Traitors on the Lafu and enemies from outside want to overthrow the Sienjo. The Master Diviner is in a hurry to find the General, presumably to inform him of this fact. However, that's all the Master Diviner knows, because Elio withheld key pieces of information from me. He foresaw the Divination Commission using the Matrix of Prescience against me. To guard against setbacks, he ensured that I knew only what he wanted the Sienjo Alliance to know in this moment. As for number three, even in their wildest dreams, the Sienjo Alliance could never have guessed it. <laughs> If the Stellaron Hunters aren't the cause of all this, then why are Blady and I even here? We're here for you. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It's no wonder Fu Shen doesn't believe it either. But the Matrix of Prescience doesn't lie. The answer is just that bizarre. The Stellaron Hunters appearing here, Blady getting arrested, me being lured to the Matrix of Prescience. It was all to bring you, the Astral Express crew, to the Sienjo. In the future that Elio chose, the power of the hunt is indispensable. And that's why the Astral Express crew had to come to the La Fu and achieve something important for the Sienjo. And that's why I had to trick you into coming here. <laughs> I needed you to meet the La Fu's general in person and to help him resolve the Stellaron crisis. I needed the Alliance to owe you a favor. That way, in the future, at the most critical moment. Then what do you think? Surprised? The notorious Stellaron Hunters did all that just to make you a hero of the Sienjo? Quite the plot twist, don't you think? Like I said, Elio withheld key pieces of information from me. The future holds endless possibilities. Knowing the right thing at the wrong time could spoil all our hard work. There is only one thing I can tell you about the future. In the best and the worst cases, you will eventually have to face Nanook the destruction. And when that time comes, you will need all the help you can get. 
It will be a brutal struggle of eonic proportions. Proportions that neither you, nor I, nor the Astral Express will ever be able to reach. In the vast majority of futures, that's when destiny ends. But, if we follow Elio's plan, there may be a glimmer of hope on the horizon. You know, even eons can be killed. You didn't finish telling us about the propagation. Keep going, it's interesting. So, neons can die, huh? Weird. I thought they were invincible. <laughs> there is no true invincibility or immortality in the world. Such exaggerations are born of the perspectives of ordinary beings. Nonetheless, ordinary beings could not have orchestrated the fall of the propagation. I don't understand. They're all eons. Why do they want to fight? You... Are you really from the Xianzhou? Other eons aside, surely you must know the story of Lan and Yaosha. Isn't destroying the Eon Yaosha the Alliance's cherished aim? Of course, I know. Well, I, I know a little. My mom made me practice with swords all day. I, I didn't really go to school. In that case, let's just change the subject. If you don't know about the feud between the hunt and the- Fine. How's this for a subject? What's in the box? Oh, this one? <laughs> it's a casket. More commonly... The deceased? Aren't you a merchant? Yes, indeed. This is just part of my job. I was asked to deliver this coffin to the Xianzhou. Ah, I'd quite forgotten. For long life species death. Nope. The Cloud Knights spend a lot of time on the battlefield. Death is a common occurrence. It's just we don't put bodies in boxes... Uh, coffins. In the Sienjo, people go to the Hall of Karma in the Ten Lords Commission and consecrate the names and jade abacuses of the dead. The Foxians and the Vidyodora have their own ceremonies. Foxian soldiers place their dead in star skiffs and then let them drift out into the stars. They call it the returning. As for the Vidyodora, they're more mysterious. They say that when a Vidyodora is very old or has a fatal injury, they turn into an egg that looks like a pearl. And when the shell breaks, they come out. My mom calls the Vidyodora long scions. When I was young, she told me stories of how the Vidyodora could turn into dragons. I don't know. What do you know? Silent but deadly speak. Your mother is right. The Vidyadava are long scions. They are descendants of the Eon of Permanence. That was why some, the power was a rare inheritance, passed down only to those who could successfully complete numerous rites and challenges. For the inheritor, it was hard to say whether it was a blessing. Ah. I've heard the story of Long the Permanence and their descendants. Many myths and legends praise the Eon for a rich and... But for some reason, the Eon disappeared among the stars without a trace. Almost as if they had never existed. Leaving... Every life has its limit. Even the Eons are not truly immortal and will eventually reach the end of... Uh let me ask you one more question. <laughs> yeah. A friend? No. So, uh... A sweetheart? 
<laughs> oh, miss, whatever gave you that impression? The individual in the coffin is neither friend nor relative. We met. Let's leave it at that, shall we? I think we've all had enough rest. <laughs> Silent but deadly. Locha, let's charge in together. If we take them out quickly, we can rescue the girl. <laughs> What happened to us letting... I've only got two hands. Please, I'll wangle you a prize. Enough. Let's go. <laughs> what? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't see any blood, so I, I thought you were okay. My motor is broken. I can't... Are you a cloud knight? Good. Take me. I, uh... Locha, silent but deadly. I'm afraid we have to delay things again. This lady is one of the judges of the Ten Lords Commission. As a Cloud Knight, I'm sorry. If I'd known, I wouldn't have got you to come with me. You'd probably be- I happen to have some medical knowledge. Perhaps I can treat the young lady's injuries? Well, it's just, she's a puppet. I think we should just take her to the realm keeping. Co Don't worry, Miss Sushang. Leave it to me. You might get an aching or numbing sensation, but it shouldn't be too painful. Do you think you can hold still? It won't work. My body is mechanical, not flesh and blood. Be it mechanical or organic, we're still dealing with composite substances. I just hope you'll tolerate my methods. <clears throat> How? What kind of medical knowledge is abundance? Hmm. Hmm. Very good. We, uh, no longer need to return to the Realm Keeping Commission. As a judge in the employ of the Ten Lords Commission, I am forbidden from interfering in the affairs of outsiders. However, seeing as you came to my aid, a word of advice. Leave as soon as possible. I came to address the root of our crisis by arresting a fugitive, a Stellaron hunter. This villain possesses exceptional swordsmanship and wields a divine weapon. They are extremely dangerous. If it hadn't been for a strange accident, my wake span might have been cut short. Strange... accident? <sighs> Come with me. I've never seen anything like it. You know... Even eons can be killed. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's not what we want. I just want to tell stories from the past. Stories about eons that have fallen. Lon the Permanence, Drilla the Beauty, Anna the Order, Tazeronth the Propagation, Akivili the Trailblaze. Hmm? These names were once known all over the universe. And now they've all but disappeared, leaving behind only masterless paths. And currently, there are three ways an eon can perish known to one. Paths with overlapping concepts will eventually collide, and the broader path will engulf the narrower one. That's how Enna the Order was assimilated by Shipe the Harmony. Two, in a war between eons, the stronger side will annihilate the weaker one. That's how Tazeronth the Propagation fell. Under the guidance of the hunt, the Sienjo Alliance travel so the Sienjo too are engaged in this process. I 
I don't know. Akavili's disappearance was very mysterious. Noose is probably the only one that can answer that question. After all, Droid Head knows everything. What do you think? Fascinating stories, no? They're the kind of stories that folks on the straight and narrow would never tell you. Hold on. Any minute now. <laughs> it's begun. Let's go, Blady. Two more places to visit. <laughs> Did Kafka escape? Uh, how are we gonna explain this to the men? If what she said is true, we won't have to explain anything. Hey, did she brainwash you? Wasn't this the dead tree Ching Chue showed us earlier? How did it grow all of a sudden? Oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Even the long-lived might not witness something like this in their lifetime. I'm so lucky! Such extraordinary energy. It's the Stellaron. Mr. Yang, do you mean the Stellaron is making the Ambrosial Arbor grow? Yes, the Stellaron the Cloud Knights are searching for must be causing this anomaly. Unless Kafka deceived the Matrix of Prescience. Stay calm, Diviner Fu. The Matrix of Prescience does not lie. The logic you have laid out concerning Kafka makes sense. I agree there is a hostile external force at work on the Lofu. The Stellaron didn't appear out of thin air. Someone managed to sneak it onto the ship. As for the culprits behind the Lofu's internal strife, I believe we are dealing with the so-called disciples of Sanctus. Kafka's revelations confirm my suspicions. Your... General... When did you have these suspicions? The moment the planter of the Stellaron revealed himself. The Sienjo has the blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter, and only another Eon Emanator would be capable of sneaking onto this ship without my knowing. We are dealing with an external threat. The Stellaron corrosion continues to flood into the ship, and yet it bypassed both the seat of divine foresight and the shackling prison. There is forethought here. Our enemy must have had access to Lafu intelligence for things to unfold in this way. It is evident now. The Stellaron hunters aren't the ones behind the curtain. No. As soon as I set eyes on Blade, it was clear to me. But why is he here? And why did he draw the Astral Express? Nevertheless, Lady Fu, your intel means the puzzle is more complete than it was before. <laughs> These Stellaron hunters are a captivating group. Such lengths to get the Sienjo and the Express onto the same track. <laughs> General, we must retain all urgency. The Ambrosial Arbor. It's the Stellaron. No need to search high and low. The traitors have planted it in the Ambrosial Arbor's delve thereby causing the tree to grow once again. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus couldn't hold off and... Every crisis is a turning point. A problem is easier to resolve when you know where it lies. Am I coming up with a plan again? Of course. I'm sure you have a countermeasure at the ready, Master Diviner. From my perspective, Convening the Cloud Knights is our immediate priority. We must head into the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor. 
expel the Stellaron spirits, and prevent the Arbor's resurrection. Mm, as ever, the Master Diviner's Omnisha provides for the fastest solution. However, sometimes speed is not everything. I have known the Stellaron's location for a while now. General? Well? You're a scoundrel. <laughs> Pulling up the grass requires removing the roots. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus have chosen to make their move now. Which means the Cloud Knights have the situation under control and the traitors have run out of pain. You've been sitting on that this whole time? How will you justify the losses if something goes wrong, General? Please, Lady Fu. I still have forces to deploy. We were in need of extra hands, and the Stellaron Hunters were kind enough to bring us together with the Astral Express. How could I look the other way? <sighs> the General smiling again. Definitely Aaron's. It's my fault. I had higher expectations of the General. Please, we can't keep getting them to do everything for us. Since when did we run out of people on the Law Fu? You... Why are you staring at me? Do I need to remind you, General, that the Ambrosial Arbor's access point is a closely guarded secret? Allowing Outworlders would be... A violation of the rules and regulations. I would like to remind you, Lady Fu, that the Sienjo comes before its rules and regulations. As such, I am about to make a decision that runs counter to those rules and regulations. Oh, uh, decisions plural. <laughs> what a rare pleasure, Lady Fu. I hereby issue you with the military tally. The Cloud Knights will be under your control. You will act in concert with the other forces in the approach to the Ambrosial Arbor through the- Under... my control? You've been eager to discover for yourself what it is to be a general. I... You've never given me the opportunity and now suddenly... <clears throat> Understood. As you wish. As for our astral friends... I hereby formally welcome you all to join our operation to seal the Stellaron. Lady Fu will deploy the Cloud Knights, but I would like you to set off in advance. Take a shortcut through the Artisanship Commission and convene with Lady Fu further down the line. Understood, understood, worry not. I know how to repay a favor. The Sienjo has met with a dramatic chain of events, and each of you has chosen to stand by us. Your fearlessness moves me. Nevertheless, the enemy is upon us and time is of the essence. Let us not allow monetary affairs to cast a shadow over more. Once catastrophe has been averted, we shall discuss this in greater detail. Miss Tingyun, I would like you to continue to serve as a guide for our astral friends. Oh, of course, General. I am duty-bound. Forward bridges no distance hence. Uh, the hexagram was right. The ambrosial arbor was felled thousands of years ago. Now it returns. He really is a delegator at heart, isn't he? There isn't much distance between the artisanship and alchemy commissions. I'm afraid the former is likely also facing imminent catastrophe. The star skiff is ready. I will lead the way. still have important tasks from the general to attend to. Go carefully, all of you. Uh, wait, wait! Master Diviner! Can you... divine our fortunes for us? No need. My Omnisha has seen that your journey will be auspicious. Everything will proceed smoothly. Uh, are you sure? You don't need to use a crazy device? Well said. Thank you for your assurance, Master Diviner. Onward. Huh? 
Look at all the people gathered here. <sighs> Not a good day for commuting on the La Fu. The Artisanship Commission Delve should have suspended operations after the Stellaron corrosion began. Why haven't these people taken Star's gifts to safety? Maybe the Artisanship Commission are just more dedicated to their work? The Divination Commission's diviners aren't exactly a hard act to... At the end of the day, work is work. You need it to live. You know, March, adults forget what relaxation means after a certain age. <laughs> Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Just speaking from the heart, that's all. Complaining from the heart. Are any of the paths in this world easy to tread? The Artisanship Commission is full of workshops, building state-of-the-art mechanisms, and craftsmen designing brand new periodically stirring up trouble as part of their tradition. Entire buildings vanishing into thin air, puppet riots. It seems like the craftsmen are too afraid to go in, but they have nowhere to run to either. We should take care, benefactors. Either way, we'll have to go in. Let's ask around first. 